idea. So fast track our departure to lunch. We'll hear back from some tables, and then we'll have lunch. I've already been warned, the food, the food will go cold. So, which table has something burning they want to share about the questions we were looking at? Okay, I'm Nick Gutman from Christian Aid and also uh, on the Hat Board. We've had a very interesting discussion uh, on this uh, table. Obviously, I'm clearly welcoming uh, the CHS. Well, one of the things that clearly comes through uh, is more discussion, and in a way this is a challenge for the CHS, but also a great opportunity and something for uh, the CHS organisation to take forward. Uh, clearly looking at how the external verification will work to make sure that national and local organisations get equal access uh, to any verification and are at the same table as all the international organisations. Seriously, anyone? I'm going to do this sitting down so I can uh, see the screen. I think uh, we talked about uh, the importance of gathering evidence in the next year uh, on how they're working, how they're not working, what's effective, what's not, and how they're being uh, you know, really accepted and taken on board by national actors as well, so that when we head into 2016, we have some evidence to take to WHS about how this is actually making an impact in the lives of conflict and disaster-affected people. Uh, we talked about it being kind of a tidying up, which has been extremely useful, but there's a difference between that and going to, have we done it and has it made a difference? So getting evidence on that is going to be absolutely crucial in the next period. Um, and that we, we have to do this uh, in a way that's more than just verification as usual, if you will. We need better techniques to understand local uh, uh, perspectives. Zainab also contributed again with some really useful experience from the Syria response uh, and the Turkey environment how contextualization will be really key for national actors um, in terms of them understanding and getting acceptance for this, that it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all so, uh, solution. And that actually uh, promoting general awareness of the standards, uh, including the existing standards, fear, I need, and so forth, is also a really important foundation for actors to actually uh, get exposed to this and take it on board. Thanks. My name is Niall, I'm working with Tropra in Ireland. Um, we covered a lot of issues and, and, and so I just read out maybe two or three of them. Um, one in terms of, of uh, how you will uh, use it within your organisation. Um, we talked about ways that you might just uh, try to assimilate it into different practices. Um, for example, one suggestion was putting it into the terms of reference for evaluations. Um, as, a, as an ID, using it maybe in partner agreements if you're working with local partners and su providing support accordingly, um, or using it in terms of program planning and how you assess your individual programs against the standard at a very practical level. Um, some of the challenges we talked about was, and I think it was mentioned a little bit earlier on, was working with local partner organisations and, and civil society groups. Um, um, on one hand, the need to, to support them and promote uh, their engagement with the process, um, but also the need to recognise that I suppose many of the standards are kind of coming from maybe a north-based north uh, uh, culture, and there are a lot of local organisations who have other ways of gathering information from the community or engaging with the community. So those need to be recognised in some shape or form as well. Um, we talked about the the idea of, of bringing the standard together, um, which was very positive, but also that there are kind of diverse standards available out there as well. Uh, and so the kind of, you know, uh, standardization versus diversity and, and the challenges around that, and, um, and both of them are legitimate in their different places. Um, opportunities, um, uh, we thought it would be really good to have a strong endorsement by donor organizations. Um, not just in the funding, but also in the terms of, of uh, following up and, and measuring assessments and so, and so on. Um, maybe promoting within the cluster systems. 
Um, looking ahead, we had a long list of things about what the uh, CHS could do in terms of more work ahead, so I'll only mention one or two of them. One is, is a, a tool for self-assessment and how to support the, the, the self-assessment process. Um, facilitate peer learning um, between organisations. Um, the translation process, and that's mentioned earlier on about the translation and the difficulties around that, and it would be really good in terms of a standardization as well of, of uh, maybe facilitating something standard around translation in various different uh, languages. Okay, thank you. Yes, hi, good morning. My name is Laura. I'm representing IOM. I think we had a quite of a lively debate on our table. Everybody encourages, of course, the principles and behind this, this exercise and the CHS, though there are different kind of positions. Uh, uh, NGOs being very committed and wishing to change uh, some of their current modalities and mechanism to adapt to CHS and other international organization and UN as well as donors may be looking at the standards that they have already and how difficult would be to change uh, the current processes and um, the kind of ongoing already accountability mechanism to member states, for instance, uh, uh, would need to be also taken into account. So there was various degrees, let's say, of, of commitments here. Uh, we also discussed about the issue of change and how difficult it is to change, and this is a process. <laughs> and um, maybe we should be all aiming to higher performance standards, especially when it comes to accountability as well to affected uh, states uh, um, by crisis, for instance. Um, I think more or less, I think I've covered uh, our discussions. Yeah, thanks. Um, no, we also had a, had a good uh, exchange at our table. Um, we covered the three um, first questions, the first three questions, in terms of whether the, our organizations will use the CHS, and we had here uh, an interesting group of, of both donors and uh, representatives from NGOs. Um, the idea was that uh, we should give some time to the process, so it's uh, too early now to say whether and or to what extent our organizations would use the standards. Certainly support to the idea and the concept. Uh, but we also want to see how we can make it compatible with uh, existing assessment criteria as for instance or and here i'm talking as donor and i think the two donors were on that line as uh, some donors are, have already their their, their, their compliance uh, criteria uh, so give time to the process and uh, no, no rush and uh, be careful with making it compulsory was kind of the, the feeling i think also among among the ngo uh, colleagues uh, in terms of challenges, um, there it's a bit in, in line with, I think, what, what uh, Laurie also said uh, when she was on the panel from, from OCHA. Uh, uh, challenges could be indeed to make sure that we don't make it too complicated, too heavy process. So the, the kind of keywords used were that uh, when rolling this out, uh, make sure that it's lean and mean because indeed there's a lot of, already a lot of work in the context of accountability and compliance happening on the on the ground so make sure that you don't add an extra layer of actually of bureaucracy um, and linked to that is also the question is uh, what's what what's the cost what's the uh, the, the the bill for uh, making this this happen um, and then also another challenge is indeed how to translate let's say standards which are maybe seen as, as coming from an international environment how to translate these to uh, the local context and how to make sure that the local partners can indeed adhere to this and, and can buy in at the same time, challenges also opportunities. Uh, we think uh, the CHS is also a good um, moment to, to engage into capacity building of, of um, for instance, by international NGOs with their local partners, or also making sure that donors can maybe provide some capacity building uh, possibilities uh, to local partners so that partners uh, over time can uh, can learn about these standards, can, can uh, see how they can be applied, can see how they can be contextualized. Um, we also thought that maybe the new technologies should really be looked into. Uh, social media, uh, new technologies are maybe a means to avoid that these processes become too heavy. Um, so that's uh, maybe something to, to look into, how to use social media with the CHS. Um, and then, well, maybe another challenge was also the contextualization. We think it's important to see how the standards can apply on the ground. At the same time, maybe there should be some kind of minimum threshold, um, so I suppose you don't want to dilute too much the standards either. Uh, there are still some kind of core values that you want to maintain when you contextualize. 
Um, I think these were the, the ideas. So, thank you. Time for one more quick feedback, and then Rain will send us off to lunch. Uh, I will not. Dead. I will not. There we are. I will not report on, on everything we discussed in the group. My name is Leonard Falk. I'm from Adra, Denmark. Uh, we had uh, many of the issues that have already been mentioned were discussed here. But one additional issue was accountability, taking accountability into to states or areas where accountability is not an issue that is liked very much. How will that be to, to work with accountability and shrinking civil society space and so on? And uh, then it was suggested that this could also, when we monitor, for, for example, timeliness, um, we will obviously find out why is it that we cannot deliver in Syria on time. And uh, it may not be because we are not having the funding or, or the capacity or the staff or the office, but it may simply be local blocking. We don't get the MOUs from the right ministry sometimes. Uh, we've been waiting for for one for six months. Uh, where do we bring our complaints? Where is the system for the NGOs working in the field uh, to take their complaints when they run into constraints in relation to some of these accountability issues? So I'm certainly not going to try to uh, summarize the very rich, uh, helpful, useful, appropriate comments, questions, observations that have come up. Maybe let me just say as we're wrapping up this morning's session, wrapping up the formal launch of the CHS, a big thank you, a huge thank you to all of those, many of uh, the people in this room, lots of people outside of this room who have been active in bringing us to this point. The standard is in place. Um, Again, as we've said before, that's something certainly worth celebrating. It's also very clear to all of us that there is a lot of work that we want to do now moving forward. This is an evolutionary process, as someone said. Um, we've already been receiving, I think, out of the consultation today, some excellent suggestions, uh, ways both tactically and strategically we can move this forward. And I know that we're looking forward to working with all of you to push the agenda of quality and accountability to affected communities forward. Thank you so much for your engagement. Thank you for this morning. Have a great lunch.